Thanks, guys. This Saturday's Race in the Park benefits the Connecticut Breast Health Initiative with all proceeds going towards cancer research. And joining me today to learn more about breast cancer is Dr. Stephen Standiford, Chief of Surgery and Chief of Staff at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Doctor, thanks for joining me. Happy to be here. Good. And now Mother's Day weekend really seems to be the perfect fit for this type of cause. Why do you think it's so important to continue to raise awareness for breast cancer specifically? Oh, you know, breast cancer remains uh, a huge health problem, um, a very, very common cancer, uh, second leading cause of cancer in women. Um, it is a common cause of cancer death, and the more awareness we have, the better our chance to find it early and lower the number of deaths from breast cancer and keep us moving along toward uh, perhaps preventing it altogether. And a lot of times you said how, how much people it affects, and in these races, people are often racing for someone in their family. How much of a role does your family history play in your risk for developing breast cancer? Well, family history is important, but I really, I have to caution everyone that it is blown out of proportion because I hate to say this when I'm talking with the media, but it does make for good stories. Most breast cancers, probably 90% of them are sporadic. That means they happen. I tell people that your breast cancer was because of bad luck, not because of bad genes. But for 10% of people, they do find that breast cancer runs in their family. They may carry one of the known breast cancer genes or just carry a tendency that seems to be hereditary in their family. And with a hereditary, you know, there is that increased risk of it all. Uh, it's interesting you say that it's not really always within the family, but we do see that the most. With the increased risk, does this mean a woman will most likely develop breast cancer? or What is that risk? How do you weigh that? It depends. Uh, for a woman who carries uh, one of the the breast cancer genes, BRCA1 or BRCA2, um, her risk over her lifetime of developing breast cancer is somewhere between 60 and 85 percent. So these women are at very high risk and um, we need to make sure we're screening them carefully and talk with them about different preventive measures, whether that's some of the medications that we can use to lower breast cancer risk or whether it would be most appropriate for the woman to go on and have bilateral mastectomies as a risk-reducing measure as instead of waiting until she has breast cancer. Right. And you mentioned some of those preventative measures that can reduce the risk. Is there anything else we need to really know about that or when should women start to be checked for these types of situations? Typically for a woman who has a family history of breast cancer, whether it is with one of the breast cancer genes or just her mother had breast cancer um, at a young age, uh, we recommend that they start screening 10 years younger than the than their mother or their sister okay. had their cancer. Um, so that if mom had cancer at 25, at 35, they should start at 25. Uh, more commonly, we will find that uh, the, most of these families, uh, the breast cancer happens in the late 30s, early 40s. It is a much earlier onset than it is for um, many of uh, the sporadic cancers. Now, one of the positives with all those preventative measures is that there is a large survivorship. And at this race coming up this weekend, that is a very important thing they do there. What innovative treatment options are available at Cancer Treatment Centers of America when women are faced with this disease? Well, there are um, a number of uh, new breakthroughs coming along. I think the most exciting that we have been working with is for women with early stage breast cancer who are having breast conservation, having a, choosing to keep their breast and not have a mastectomy. Um, the trade-off for keeping your breast is typically radiation therapy to the breast after a lumpectomy. And that uh, traditionally has been six and a half weeks of daily radiation treatment. We've been working with um, an intraoperative radiation technique where we have a linear accelerator right in the operating room and can deliver the equivalent dose of radiation to the area where the cancer was in somewhere between four and six minutes as opposed to six and a half weeks and the woman wow. needs oftentimes no additional radiation. It's truly you know, getting them back home six and a half weeks faster. That's pretty amazing. Do you have any success stories? Um, we have uh, treated over 200 women wow. 
so far with this technique over the last four years. Um, we have one recurrence is all, which is uh, much lower than you would anticipate with typical lumpectomy and uh, radiation. And I think the most exciting thing is that, um, especially for us where our patients often travel a distance to come to us, uh, they're able to travel home the next day. Um, they get a great cosmetic result. The breast doesn't look like a breast that's had radiation treatment because we are able to hold the skin out of the way because the skin doesn't need the radiation. We put a lead shield underneath the breast tissue and pull the breast tissue that needs the radiation over it so that the lead shield blocks radiation from going any deeper so that people don't get radiation to their ribs, to their chest wall, to their lung or to their heart, which uh, they really don't need right. and it's, uh, you know, it's a important. whole lot nicer. Um, and we've been very happy with the the overall outcome with uh, the cosmetic appearance, um, how soft the breast remains, uh, and the you know it's also nice to uh, be controlling their cancer. Exactly. And how do you find that these women keep that confidence? Because I know it's a, it's a very challenging thing to go through, but something like this really seems to kind of help them still feel exactly who they are. Well, I I think it's very important that. Um, the woman believes in her treatment, uh, she has to believe in her treatment team, uh, and she has to know how to lean on folks to, uh, to get her through. It is, um, for most of these women, it's the first time that they've been faced with a significant illness. Um, I tell them that the toughest part of breast cancer is that you learn that you are mortal and that eventually, you know, you're not going to stay on this earth forever. It's just my job to make sure that it's not breast cancer that does that to them. That teamness right there. We'll definitely see a lot of that this weekend. Dr. Standiford, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. The race in the park is this Saturday at Walnut Hill Park in New Britain. For more information on the race, be sure to head over to sportsedge.com. And if you're there, be sure to stop on by and say hello. We'll all be there. Reporting for Sports Edge, I'm Erica Walker.